Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. We're into the mid-season finale section of the television season. That means that right now we've got a bunch of mid-season finales coming up, and a lot of them are going to end on cliffhangers. And that's a time-honored television tradition. Uh, going, actually, before television, it was a thing. Uh, with the movie serials that used to run, with radio plays that used to be on, every now and then you'd get a really good cliffhanger. And, well, today you still get some really good cliffhangers. Uh, there are some shows that have been absolutely spectacular with them, uh, and other shows that have left a little to be desired or not bothered at all trying to do cliffhangers. They tie up their stories nicely and you come in fresh the next season. But the question that I want to talk a little bit about today is what makes a good cliffhanger in a show? And the simple answer is that it is the knowledge based on the show itself that you may very well be in Jeopardy, no matter who you are on the show. Now, that that used to be a much diff more difficult thing to uh, think about than it is these days, uh, when you used to have to worry about how much trouble it was to redo titles, because uh, if you kill off a main character, you have to take their name out of the opening credits of the show. And that used to be a bit of a chore. The credits were set at the beginning of the season, and they weren't necessarily going anywhere until the next season started up. So, a big season finale cliffhanger, yeah. Maybe you'd really lose someone important in the show. But mid-season? Any random time? No, probably not. Now that you can re-render credits comparatively quickly, easily, and cheaply, that's not a sure thing anymore. Having your name in the credits does not guarantee your survival. Especially on a lot of the shows I watch. Walking Dead, uh, Battlestar Galactica, the uh, reboot that Sci-Fi did a while back. Uh, these dark, darker, more gritty shows have a habit of putting named, known, loved characters in jeopardy and Every now and then, sometimes more often than you can believe, uh, following through on eliminating them or having them come to uh, some serious, serious harm. Uh, and that really ups that emotion, uh, emotional component for a cliffhanger. Uh, because you know that maybe something really bad is going to happen. Maybe, maybe that character's not going to come back. And The Walking Dead has done this to us on numerous occasions. Uh, watching through uh, shows like Daredevil and uh, Jessica Jones, if uh, we weren't binge watching those, if those were being dripped out to us an episode a week, uh, there'd definitely be points in there that would have us wondering, well, is that really going to be, be the end of that character? I mean, we were just getting to know them. I was starting to kind of like them. And did they just actually kill them? And in a lot of cases, these days, the answer is yeah. Yeah, they did. A and no one is safe. And that's, that's good. That allows for better dramatic storytelling. And it's that sort of dramatic storytelling that really can hook you in to make sure you come back after a break. And uh, the other way to go, of course, is with uh, big action climaxes. You, you have the middle of a fight scene with, with, the, uh, with, with the heroes and the villains facing off against each other, and uh, you don't finish it. You, you cut it right when it's starting to get really exciting. Now, that doesn't necessarily involve worrying about whether or not anyone's going to die or not, but it wa leaves you wanting to see the resolution of that scene. And this is something that Blood and Oil did really, really well in their first episode 
of the series. It's what brought me back to watch most of the second episode uh, because I wanted to see how the fight scene at the end of the first episode ended. Alias used to be fantastic at this uh, during its first few seasons. There was no way you could get to the end of an episode without being left in an adrenaline spike wondering what was going to happen next. Uh, and, and then you come back the next week and the entire first 10 minutes, 12 minutes of the show is the resolution of that cliffhanger. Quantum Leap did it with uh, having the main character, Sam, jump into the next episode most of the time, and you get that little minute or two view of the crazy situation he has just found himself in. So of course you have to come back next week, or after the season, mid-season break, or after the summer, and see what happens next. So my question to you, is what are your favorite cliffhangers that you've ever seen on television? Uh, I want to know. Tell me down in the comments. If you like the stuff I talk about, uh, this mix of media and uh, other philosophical stuff, uh, give me a thumbs up right down there. If uh, you're subscribed, thank you very much for being subscribed. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscription button so you get notified when these come out. And if you know anyone else who might be interested in any of this, share this with them so that uh, they can get involved in the conversation. That's it for today. Uh, I'm going to go watch some more TV. I'm Kier. I guess I'll see you tomorrow.